Hey guys, Gary Dean here, Tampa, Florida, DetailJuice.com. I'm here with a, uh, another addition to the Untold Truth in Detailing mini series I have going on that is becoming very popular. Um, check out the other videos on that. There'll be a lot more of that because I intend on, you know, I get a ton of questions on a daily basis from a lot of guys who are just starting out in detailing and they really don't know what direction to take. Um, the biggest problem in the detailing industry as far as not like doing the detailing but coming from like whatever else you're doing with your life to trying to make money in detailing, the biggest problem with that is you know, a lot of these guys, they have such high passion for you know, making cars shiny, they lose sight of what is really important and in business is making money. I mean, that's that's the point. Um, but as far as making money goes, that is that comes second to making your customers happy. Uh, but that's another situation, and we'll get into that another time. But uh, this particular video is going to be about. Um, how you should set your pricing to start. Yeah, I have notes. I make notes. Uh, I sure sure do have a list that is uh, <laughs> pretty long of different videos that uh, people have been asking me to shoot. So uh, this particular video is on a question that I get asked all of the time. I can't even I can't even begin to tell you or even add up the amount of times I've been asked this question. Um, how do I set up my pricing? And, you know, pricing ultimately will be dependent on uh, your, your demographic, demographic you're trying to reach and your location. And um, when, when I say location, different types of uh, places uh, warrant higher or lower prices. Like if you're in a rural area and there aren't a lot of people around and it doesn't cost you a lot to live, uh, you can charge less money. I mean, I live in Tampa, Florida. Uh, I generally cater to a higher end demographic and that warrants a little bit higher price. But beyond that, I have the experience level to charge more. Uh, people know who I am, and um, and that plays a big role in it too. And what I want to, you know, really get at right now is is there a standard that you should start at? And and in my opinion, yes, I believe that uh, thirty five dollars an hour as a basis to build on is a good estimate for any demographic, uh, especially if you're just getting into it. Um, you know, I think that at $35 an hour, you can still be profitable and you can pay for your costs and that's, you know, product costs, the gas to get there, gas to run your equipment, uh, wear and tear, all of that kind of stuff. And that brings me to the other situation. Um, is the cost to profit ratio with the product you're using. A lot of people don't realize uh, that when you do some simple math, and that's the third section is simple math, uh, people don't realize that they need to do this simple math. And when you do that simple math and you break it down to, for example, if you start at $35 an hour. now. You don't want to charge by the hour. The customer doesn't like that. They don't want to not know what the ultimate price is going to be. So with experience, you'll start to realize how long certain things take. So when you build your packages, and I'll do another video on, on how to build your, build your packages, but when you are charging uh, for your packages based on X amount of dollars per hour for this example, 
I believe that everyone should start at $35 an hour for a base, but not charge by the hour. You should write your packages out, take a look at how the packages are broke down, and make sure that they're designed in a way that makes a lot of sense to the customer, uh, it has added value that the customer would see between the levels of the packages, um, and you should eventually be able to figure out when you're building or when you're estimating uh, the package for the customer on the original on the initial consultation or the conversation over the phone however however you want to do it <clears throat> it's crazy a lot of guys will say don't don't do estimates over the phone. Um, I generally will give the worst case scenario over the phone so that they're not sticker shocked when they see, uh, and I can really qualify them to move forward. Uh, that's pretty important, because uh, I don't have time for BS or games, or I call them tire kickers. I mean, you know, I got, I'm a busy man, I got a lot to do. You know, detailing now is not my main source of income, and um, I mean, I've, I've got a couple other businesses outside the detailing industry. You know, I own the product line and I own the detailing service, but I also have a couple other businesses. So uh, detailing is not my uh, main source of income uh, at all anymore. So, um, you know, I've got other things going on. So when it comes to taking a job, uh, I got to make sure it's worth it for me. So my situation is completely different. I'm established, I have experience, people know who I am, but if you're starting out, I would base your, uh, I would get in there um, based on 35 bucks an hour, uh, and that's, you know, you'll eventually be able to figure out, you know, per what you see the, the vehicle needs, uh, how long it's gonna take you. Um, you generally wanna overestimate an hour or two so that when you give them that total time, so for example, if you're basing uh, your package uh, or you're building a custom package uh, per your initial consultation with the customer uh, based on what the car needs, uh, you're saying, you're, you're thinking in your head, okay, that vehicle needs four hours worth of work. Now, you might get in there and things are changing a little bit. So you wanna change that uh, estimate before you talk to the customer, because that number you shoot can't change. You'll throw the customer off, and everybody knows when the customer feels intimidated, they and you have lost. Um, so, you know, think about these things before you open your mouth. That's pretty important uh, when you're talking to the customer. But, you know, again, that's another video. Uh, if, if the car in your mind is going to take you four hours to complete and you haven't talked to the customer about their budget, what you're going to want to do is shoot that over by an hour or two. So um, you want to make sure that that customer um, doesn't hear that number until you, you have made the decision that that's the number in your own mind. So if you think it's going to take four hours based on what you see, either quote them for five hours or six hours. Not the time though, you want to give them a lump sum, a round number that they'll put in their head and they will expect to pay at the end. Now you want to make sure that you're compensated for all of everything. That 35 bucks an hour, I mean, I'll do another video on the, the, the profit to cost ratio and you know it should not be m more than 10% of the total dollar amount you get for the job, the, what you are spending on it. That's products, that's uh, your gas for uh, you know, your equipment, that's uh, the gas to get there and back, wear and tear, all of that should be right around 10% or inside of 10% uh, or you're doing it wrong. I mean, that's the reality of the job. So, uh, and if, if what you're spending the money on 
doesn't work into there, you've got to make some adjustments. So uh, the, 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 the cost to profit ratio needs to be around 10% of the total dollar amount. For example, if you're charging $100 for a job, it should not cost you more than $10 to make that happen. Uh, if you're charging $200, it should not co cost you more than $20 to make that happen. That's gas, that's everything. Everything, product, gas, wear and tear, all of that, right around 10%. If it's 11%, if it's 12%, that works too. But the a good rule of thumb when you do this simple math, and you should do it, you should write everything out. If you get if you buy something in concentrate, so for example, at detailjuice.com, I sell everything in concentrate. Um, the only thing that's not concentrate as far as having to mix uh, with something would be um, uh, like Vitality Shield, Infinite Diamond Shield, um, you know, your uh, Infinite Finish, Infinite Cut, you know, the polishes and, and you know, the, the solvent based sealants. But make sure that you're at 10% or less, 10 percent or less the total cost of the job should be uh, what you are spending on the job. Uh, so like I said, if it's hundred dollars should be ten dollars or less it costs you to do it uh, to get there and make it happen. Um, but yeah, based it on uh, thirty five dollars an hour, you think it's going to take four hours to do it, 35 times four, that's 140, yeah, 70, 70, uh, 140, um, and you want to make sure that you don't lose, and that's the other part of the game, you know, you, you need to talk to the customer, and, you know, you, you have to read the customer, you have to figure all that out, and so if it's, in your mind, going to cost 140 bucks, uh, for them to have you do it, uh, it's going to take you four hours. I would hit them with, you know, 175 bucks. That's five hours. But, you know, you've just got to make up your mind what the job is worth. Add an hour or so to it. That way you don't lose in the equation. That's, that's most important. Um, and that, that's really the bottom line. Um, the other topic is when can you raise your prices? Well, I would say a good rule of thumb for raising those prices is, I mean, I, I would give it a solid year. Um, you need to experience. I mean, the bottom line is people will not pay the same price for an unknown detailer that they've never heard of, never had a recommendation for. Uh, they, they're not going to pay the same price as they would someone like myself who has already been established, already gets referrals, already all over the internet, everybody knows who I am. Um, it's, it's quite different. Um, I can pretty much charge whatever I want because the customer knows what they're going to get from me. Um, they may not know what they're going to get from you. So you have to start somewhere and like I said, base it on 35 bucks an hour. Um, you can start to raise your prices when you get overbooked. So for example, if you're at 35 bucks an hour and you're slam busy uh, all the time and you can't take more jobs, raise the price. Then you can make more money per job but the amount of people who are attracted to that lower price will drop off some. So you can take more customers at that higher rate. And you just keep doing that as you see fit, as you obtain more skills, more experience, uh, more knowledge about what's going on, you continue to raise your price. I mean, that's the bottom line. Um, demand warrants price increase. If there's too much demand, uh, well, I shouldn't say if there's too much demand, if there's so much demand for your service that you can't provide it properly, you've got to raise your price so that your quality doesn't go down. Because when your quality goes down, so does your reputation. And when your reputation goes down, you don't have much else. That's the bottom line. So you know, keep that rep high, uh, keep your quality high. So that's where we're at. Um, 
you know, start out at a basis of $35 an hour. Make sure that your uh, cost to profit ratio is about 10% uh, of the total dollar amount. Um, and those two keys right there is something that I couldn't find really anywhere. There's no set number or whatever on the internet. I, I you know, I've done a lot of research and I wanted to bring that to you guys because I've been telling people this for years and years and years and years. Um, it's a good starting point. Uh, it's you really could make some solid money at that, and people aren't really turned away. I mean, think about it. If I could get done a wash with the Gary Dean wash method and infinite use detail juice, I can get uh, the wheels done, the tires dressed. Uh, a, a quick detail spray on the outside with the infinite use detail juice, vacuum the interior, wipe the interior down, and hit the door jams real quick within an hour, which is more than reasonable, for 35 bucks. I mean, that just seems fair. Uh, you know, I can tell you eight years ago when I moved from Virginia, it's over eight years ago now, when I moved from Virginia Beach, uh, Virginia to Tampa, Florida, I I had to start over again. So I was, you know, I was higher than that in Virginia because people knew who I was. I was in a different environment, different place. Uh, the internet was just starting to pop, uh, and I wasn't as widely known on the internet at that time. So I had to start somewhere, and you know, thirty-five bucks an hour really worked for me. Um, you know, again. Not all of you guys are going to make it. That's the bottom line. I mean, some of you guys just can't wear all the hats. You can't separate your passion to, you know, from the profit. You're not going to be able to take yourself out of that hobbyist mindset, that hobbyist mentality where you're pleasing yourself on every detail and spending way too much time and you're not making any money to uh, the businessman mentality where you are giving the customer what they want and you're making the money. That's that's really where we're at. A lot of you guys aren't going to make it. You're going to fall right off the map because you just can't swing it. So you should probably keep your day job. Um, that's where we're at. So um, thank you so much for watching. My cell phone number is 813-846-4406. If you need me, please let me know. Uh, I cannot help you if you don't reach out. If you got a request for a video, please let me know about that too. I'll do my best to accommodate. I'll put it on the list. I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit like if you like this video. If you didn't like it, whatever. Have a great day.